Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer on Sunday the 28th of February, the second Sunday of Lent. Our reading this evening is taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 31 to 38, and is read by Joan. And Carolyn is leading us in our prayers. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise for ever. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John says, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ, rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts 
and from our minds. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 135, verses 1 to 14. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise his name, you servants of the Lord, who stand in the Lord's house, in the temple of our God. Praise the Lord, because he is good. Sing praises to his name, because he is kind. He chose Jacob for himself, the people of Israel for his own. I know that our Lord is great, greater than all the gods. He does whatever he wishes in heaven and on earth, in the seas and in the depths below. He brings storm clouds from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the storms and he brings out the wind from his storeroom. In Egypt, he killed all the firstborn of people and animals alike. There he performed miracles and wonders to punish the king and all his officials. He destroyed many nations and killed powerful kings. Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kings in Canaan. He gave their lands to his people. He gave them to Israel. Lord, you will always be proclaimed as God. All generations will remember you. The Lord will defend his people. He will take pity on his servants. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We will now hear our reading from Job. The reading is from Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to the end of the chapter. Jesus began to tell his disciples about the terrible things he would suffer and that he would be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the other Jewish leaders and be killed and that he would rise again three days afterwards. He talked about it quite frankly with them. So Peter took him aside and chided him. You shouldn't be saying things like that, Peter told Jesus. Jesus turned and looked at his disciples and then said to Peter very sternly, Satan, get behind me. You are looking at this only from a human point of view and not from God's. 
Then he called his disciples and the crowds to come over and listen. If any of you wants to be my follower, he told them, you must put aside your own pleasures and shoulder your cross and follow me closely. If you insist on saving your life, you will lose it. Only those who throw away their lives for my sake and for the sake of the good news will ever know what it means to really live. And how does a person benefit if he gains the whole world and loses himself in the process? For is anything worth more than himself? Anyone who is ashamed of me and my message in these days of unbelief and sin, I, the man of glory, will be ashamed of him or her when I return in the glory of my Father with the holy angels. Get behind me, Satan. I often imagine the disciples, several years after Jesus' death and resurrection, talking about the good old days, reminiscing the way that friends who have shared a life-changing experience often do. One of them looks at Peter and says, Hey, Satan, tell us about the day that you rebuked Jesus. How did that go? What were you thinking about, Peter? And Peter, sheepishly answering, You know, I just didn't like the thought of Jesus suffering and dying. I didn't understand it. It's not what I signed up for, or who I thought the Messiah would be. And the others, starting to realise that Peter didn't say anything, that they weren't already thinking. And perhaps Peter didn't say anything that we haven't thought about or even wanted to say. Jesus has a vastly different understanding of discipleship from what most of us would probably want. When another's reality and vision begin to conflict with and overtake our own, we often rebuke. We take them aside to enlighten them, to help them understand, show them the error of their ways. And that's all that Peter did. And if we were to be truly honest, haven't we all at some point disagreed with Jesus. If he can cast out the demons and silence the madman in the synagogue, then surely he could silence the voices that drive us crazy. If he can heal Peter's mother-in-law, then why not those whom we love? If he can cleanse the leper, why do our lives sometimes leave us feeling unclean and isolated? If he can make the paralytic walk, then why are so many crippled by fear, dementia or addiction? If he can calm the sea, then surely he could calm the storms of our world and yet they rage on. If he can keep Jairus' daughter from dying, then why not our children, our friends and our loved ones? If he can feed 5,000 with a few fish and a couple of pieces of bread, then why does much of the world still go hungry? And I am often asked these kind of questions and I have often wondered about them myself. And I know of people who have lost their faith and left the church because of them. These are our rebukes of Jesus. He's not at acting like we want him to do. And
and sometimes his words challenge and shock us. And maybe, just maybe, we're not so different from Peter. Just a few verses before today's Gospel, Jesus asks his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Peter names him as the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One of God. Jesus is the one of whom the prophets spoke, the one for whom Israel has waited, the one who was supposed to restore God's people. Peter was right, but yet he didn't really understand. Peter has an image of what the Messiah is supposed to do and supposed to be, and we all do. All is well when Jesus is casting out demons and healing the sick, preventing death and feeding the multitudes. We tend to like that Jesus and we want to follow him. However, Jesus will not conform to our images of who we think he is or who we want him to be. Instead, he asks us to conform to who he knows himself to be. And that is the one who must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, be put to death, and after three days rise again. And Jesus sets a choice before us, and it's a choice we each have to make. We can either choose ourselves and deny Jesus or deny ourselves and choose Jesus. If any want to become my followers, he says, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Self-denial is the beginning of discipleship. I suspect that is not what Peter had in mind when Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fish for men. I wonder if that is what we had in mind when we go to church, or how we understand and practice our faith as daily self-denial. Jesus' words are hard and his ways extreme. Faith in Jesus is not about the elimination of risks, the preservation of life and the ability to control. Instead, Jesus asks us to risk it all, abandon our lives and relinquish control to God. And he expects nothing less of those who would follow him. And the way of Christ, of self-denial, reminds us that our lives are not our own. They belong to God. We are not in control, God is. Our lives are not about us, it is about God. And there comes a great freedom in knowing that these things and we are free to fully be alive. As long as we believe that our life is about us, we will continue to try to exercise power over others. Try to save ourselves, control our circumstances and maybe Yes, maybe just even rebuke Jesus. Jesus rarely exercised power over others or tried to control circumstances. He simply made different choices. Self-denial is not about being out of control or powerless. It is about the choices that we make. 
Jesus chose to give in a world that takes, to love in a world that hates, to heal in a world that injures, and to give life in a world that kills. He offered mercy when others sought vengeance, forgiveness when others condemned, and compassion when others were indifferent. He trusted God's abundance when others said there was not enough. And with each choice, Jesus denied himself and showed that God was present. And at some point, these kind of choices will catch the attention of and offend those who live and profit by power and control and looking out for number one. Those who would not deny themselves. Jesus knew that he would be rejected by the elders, by the chief priests and by the scribes. And it happens in every age for those who choose the path of self-denial. I wonder which path we will take. Amen. The Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen thy salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. We affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And Caroline will now lead us in our prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God. You have called us into life to love and serve you. You have promised that you are with us always and that you are our helper and our guide. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who hear and obey your call, for men and women who willingly sacrifice and deprive themselves for the good of others. We remember all who have spent their lives in your service. We ask you to give strength to all who are quietly seeking to give you their love and their lives. We remember today all who suffer rejection, pain or distress for following you. Dear Lord, as you have called us, hear us when we call upon you. We remember with gratitude all who have given their lives in research and exploration for the good of others. We ask you to bless all scientists and technicians, especially throughout this pandemic, as they strive to heal our world by bringing us a vaccine. And we pray for the leaders of people 
for those working among the poor and the deprived of the world. We give thanks for all our loved ones, who for us do they give their love, their sacrifice and their care. We seek your blessing upon our homes and our families, and we, we remember all who have no one to care for them. We give thanks for the dedication of doctors and nurses and all hospital staff. We think of our loved ones in hospitals or care homes. It may have been some time when we have not had physical contact. And it is these people in hospitals who are there to hold the hand of our loved ones when we cannot. We ask your blessing on all who are in hospital, all who are ill at this time, and upon all who look after them. And we remember all who feel that no one cares about them. We rejoice that you have called us to eternal life and that you have invited us to enjoy your presence forever. We pray for all who have given their lives in the service of others, for our own loved ones departed. Living God, you have lit the day with the sunlight and the midnight with shining stars. Lighten our hearts with the bright beams of the sun of righteousness, risen with healing in his wings. Jesus Christ, our Lord, and so preserve us in the doing of your will, that at the last we may shine as the stars forever. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for today, the second Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings. And by following in his way, may we come to share in his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And we join together in singing a blessing to one another with our Vesper prayer. May God's blessing surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his way. May his presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. May God's blessing surround you tonight as you trust Him and walk in His light. May His presence within God.
God keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in.